You are still watching the Wednesday edition of New Dawn. And just like we said before we went on that break, we said we're going to have the interview segment and we're looking at something that has refused to go away. It's more or less becoming, you know, um, so recurrent now that people are getting a little afraid and we're looking at incessant building collapse. Uh, just some weeks, some days ago, we had another one, and people are trapped, were trapped, and lives were lost. And you are asking yourself, why do we have to constantly go through this? So we want to look at this issue critically, the building collapse. It could just have been easier if you just build in one building that's collapsed. It's incessant. So how do we curb it? What is the way forward? To help us digest this topic and look at it critically. Uh, we have a civil engineer in the house, someone who should know, Mr. Sam or Nebamoin. We'd like to welcome you, sir, to New Dawn. Thank you very much for having me. It's my pleasure to be here. All right. Uh, my colleague is also here. Uh, maybe you will take on the first shot, Dominic. Well, okay, let me begin by asking, uh, being an engineer and, of course, an expert in this that we are discussing today, um, are you worried really by the spate of building collapse that we have seen in recent times? Is it uh, of worry to you as an expert? I mean, because uh, I mean, a layman might actually be worried, while the experts will think, uh, well, it's a normal thing, and you know, maybe one or two minuses. But as an expert, as an engineer, are you concerned? Are you worried? Is it a thing of worry to you? Thank you. Um, it's worrisome uh, because it's one too many cases that we've had in Nigeria here. Mm. Um, I don't like to compare, but there's no way we will, we will not compare with other countries. Uh, and then there's a, when, when you compare Nigeria with other countries, you will see that the, the uh, building collapse is rare in developed countries compared to Nigeria. And there are, on, it shows that there are underlying issues. Why are we getting it all wrong? Uh. We, there must be something that we are getting wrong for us to continue to have this issue of incessant building collapse. It's a, wor it's a worry to each and every one of um, the engineering team. Uh, you build a house and then after some time you see that it collapses. Faults here and there, but th those are the things that we're going to be looking at yeah, this morning. Fun. All right, now let's, let's, when you're talking about um, building collapse, a building under normal circumstances is not supposed to collapse. Or yes. where it's not built to collapse. It's not designed. It's not designed to, to collapse. collapse. Yes. So, but then you now have a situation where a building collapses, you know, and then one, two, three, four, you know, goes on. What would you say is fundamentally wrong? Thank you. I, I think for me, um, two, two things okay. that are very important about building. Number one is safety. Okay. And the second thing is stability. Okay. Now, most of our people, um, clients, um, uh, they, they think about the cost of building. Uh, they put that in, on the front burner before safety and stability and safety and stability is the most important thing when you talk about building because if a building is not safe yeah. to inhabit mm -hmm. uh, we, we, we will not be talking about cost when their um, properties or lives are lost in the in the in the process let's take for example the one of equi that that yeah. that happened you, you you would agree with me that construction was still on it was still under construction, and then the building collapsed during construction. There are fundamental issues. Probably um, uh, when it was de the building was designed for a particular number of floors, and then probably the owner of the building said, okay, I want to take it higher, without doing something with the foundation. <laughs> um, uh, the foundation of the building is what holds the, the building. And when we, we don't uh, uh, do something, do follow the design of, of the um, structural engineer uh, in putting up a particular building, 
then we we'll, are bound to have this kind of collapse. This, this um, issue of uh, foundation and all of those things is one out of many of the issues that we are talking about here. Now, still talking about the high-rise um, building that collapsed in Ikoi, Lagos, yeah. uh, which we talked about. I mean, according to reports, we don't know how true it, it is. The uh, building was designed for 15 floors, floors yeah. and then we understood that as at the time it went down and came down, it was actually they were on their 20th, 20th, 20th floor, 20th or 21st floor. Now, I mean, were they not ought to have collected approval to, um, if at all they wanted to add, you know, to the number of floors that the building will carry? Yeah. Were they not supposed to collect approval, get approval to achieve that? Yes, the, um, the, the government agency was supposed to have given them approval, but we know how things are done in Nigeria. So, for me... No, sir, how, how are things done in Nigeria? <laughs> Maybe you will... Uh, you uh, will I, I, don't, I don't want to indict any government agency, but um, the blame of all these things is to all of us. Okay. Government agencies, clients who want to build... Um, we, the engineering team, you know, sometimes these are our clients. They may, they may prefer to use uh, uh, artisans okay. rather than using professionals because they want to cut down on costs. Okay. And like I mentioned earlier, stability and, and, uh, and safety are the most important things when you talk about building. So um, going back to so you are saying let, let me take you say stability and safety safety so money is not necessary when you are thinking money is necessary money. money is necessary but the, the truth is you can you quantify does money come to place when you talk about the lives of people okay so um, for example let's take for example the 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 one that just happened the one at the matter matter okay. at the end of the day. The owner of that building may lose the the land. So what has he lost? He has lost the land. He has lost the building. He has lost properties. He has lost people yeah. to his name. So why not do the right thing from the world go? Do follow the the design of the architect, the design of the uh, of the um, structural engineer. Follow it to detail. Engage professionals for this job. Yes, they will they just collect the money once. You pay, you, you pay them for, for their due, but you, you are sure that your, your building is safe. Now, what you are seeing, in essence, is that safety and stability would actually determine the amount of money that will be pumped into the project. Yes. Hmm. Safety, uh, let, let me give an example. You want to build a story building, but your structural engineer has, has designed that your columns should have um, 16 mm. Okay. That is the design of the, the the structural engineer, probably because of the type of soil that you have there. Those are the things that those are some of the, of the other things that that also come up. To. What you build in Abeokuta that has a very strong uh, um, soil st um, structure yeah. is even from what you build in Lagos that is largely a waterlogged place. Okay. Mm. So the type of foundation you use for for Lagos is even from some part of major part of Abenkuta, okay. for example. So for me, going back to um, safety and uh, stability. stability. Now, w when you look at uh, um, what the the structural engineer probably said, okay, use 16 mm. But because you have an artisan that says, ah, okay, um, 12 mm will do the job. You use 12 mm. But how long can that 12 mm? Carry that, uh, carry that building for. And then another thing that we need to also put at the back of our mind is that each building has an expiry date. Mm. But do we all know? Like seriously? Yes. Mm. Okay. Each building has an expiry date. It doesn't, what, look, it doesn't look like we know that around here. Um, um, it's supposed to go on for life. It is not, it's not supposed to go on for life. If it's supposed to go on for life, then we shouldn't should be having um, collapse of buildings. Mm. So how can, how can we say the collapse that we've experienced, the collapses we have experienced, is because um, the buildings have expired? No. For me, one, um, um, materials that, are, that were used for those pro uh, projects 
might not be quality materials. They may use quantity, but are they using the right specifications? Like the example I just gave of 16 mm and 12 mm, the work that a 16 mm uh, iron rod would do is even for what a 12 mm iron would do, would do on a building. So those are the things that affect the stability of the building. Those are the things that affect the safety of the building. When we talk about safety too, the safety of the people that are going to inhabit mm. the buildings. Yeah. But that's what we are looking at. A building doesn't just suddenly collapse. Yes, I agree with you, sir. Now, there would have been telltale signs. Yes. Even the one at Ikoyi or even every other place, is it, is, it for, is it that they didn't see those signs or they just decided to ignore the signs? The, the truth is that in this part of the world, yeah. we usually ignore do, those signs. Mm -hmm. Let's take, for example, I, I read about um, a, a building close by okay. to this one that just uh, collapsed yeah, okay. that is already in distress. Okay. And they started evacuating people. I'm, I'm sure they would have been telling people that uh, this building is, uh, of course, you, you, you will know when you are working on a building and you know that this building has an issue. You will know, except you don't want to you come to, to reality. Mm -hmm. uh, we will look at uh, 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 what am I going to do? Am, am I going to pull down this old, old building, building and then coming okay. back to cost? Mm -hmm. Okay. Coming back to cost. I know someone here in Abeokuta was doing a building, very close to me, was doing a building. And then before he even finished the building, you see cracks all around, around the building. And then what did you, he got the, the expert advice of engineers, Oga, pull this thing down. And that's exactly what he did. Today he's better for it. He has built an, a, another um, um, building. On the same um, uh, building, on the same building, on the same land, land, land. on the same land, um, they, they, they did a fresh foundation and all of those things. But he is not afraid that a building will collapse on him, on him and his family today. Now, to talk about the signs, I mean, even the one that collapsed in the Butembeta in Lagos, uh, the caretaker uh, actually said that he had even notified the inhabitants of the building that they should leave that he wanted to renovate, renovate i mean because the building was also i mean there were signs that the building would actually collapse but they refused he was also staying in the building you know and then when he saw that i mean this building will collapse anytime he moved out of that building according to what we were told i don't know how true it is i mean because i mean that could as well be said to exonerate himself, himself. Yeah. you know but really uh, talking about signs what are those signs that one can look out for to say oh this building may collapse anytime soon let me run for my life. Number one, you see cracks. Number two, you... No, when you mean cracks, is it, <laughs> you know, uh, because, you know, there's this Yoruba proverb that says, go give me your land. You know, it <laughs> looks like we are, we are used to that <laughs> the, the clean of the... You know, it's like in this, in this kind of our own environment, we are used to that opening... Are you talking about on the walls? walls, on the, walls? The, the, the openings on the walls are signs of something that is wrong. Mm. So, so first, and foremost, first okay. and foremost, well, sometimes it may be maybe uh, sometimes the type of uh, sound you used in plastering, mm. and that is a minor. But that's issue. a fundamental problem. Once yes, you want to see a major crack, maybe a major crack at uh, not in the middle of the wall, okay. at the edge of a wall, you know, because. The edge of the wall is supporting something. Okay. It's supporting something, maybe um, upstairs and all of those things. Then another thing is, once you move, if you're on, on, a, on an upper floor and then you feel vibration, and you, you will, when, you, when you move and you, you, you start to feel yourself, yeah. that is a sign you also that there's something fundamentally wrong about this yeah. building. Yeah. And, but, but like we said, we turn deaf ears to these things in this part of the world. I really and that's what, why we... What should one do when such things are observed? Um, for me, I think the first thing is for the caretaker or whoever owns the, the building to report to the necessary agency. But we are always running away from that because of the sanctions that may follow. Sanctions that, will, that may get to the engineer that supervises the job, sanctions that may get to 
the agency uh, officers that signed okay. some of the documents okay. approving the, the, the building. Because ideally, once they approve, there's supposed to be inspections. Yeah. People that, that go to the, the sites to inspect, oh, are they doing the right thing? I know of a particular project that is just starting, but it took um, the, the agency about six months, if not more, to make to ensure that the right thing was done okay. for before they could give them approval. Right. For me, that is thorough. But at, at the same time, they, they, they be sending people to that site to ensure that, okay, are they doing the right thing? Not just um, um, just to make sure that oh Stand the right up. standards are followed. Mm. Mm. Now, so for me, for me, reporting to the necessary agency and then the agency enforce. Of course, once once the government agency tells you that you have so so day, days to leave to vacate this apartment, you don't have any choice for your own safety. But most of the time. We, put everything on emotions, uh, where we will now move to, where we will move out. Okay. Now look at the number of people that have lost their lives to okay. this particular, like I said earlier, it's one too many and it's avoidable. Now is it that we don't learn? <clears throat> because if, if, you, if you, you've just seen the one that happened now. Yeah. That's not the first time it's happening. So, you know, and there are still, if you watch buildings even on that, on that street, 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 yes. You know, the question you ask yourself is, is it that we don't learn? Is it that, is there something wrong with us psychologically? <laughs> or is there a problem, you know, with us? The, what I would say to that is, Nigerians think that if it has not touched me, if it has not happened to me, then I'm still safe. Okay. So with that mindset, they, we put a nonchalant attitude to, to handling such things as, you know, even our health, even our health. Okay. We don't pay too much attention to it the way we ought to. Okay, something, um, you're already feeling strained somewhere. Ah, it will go, just give me a bony kick. And that, is, and that is it. Meanwhile, that particular place is pointing to a major issue for you to look at. Uh, okay. Now, um, talking about building collapse yes. in the country, yes. um, most times you hear that it is Lagos that the collapse has taken place. Uh, very few in other parts of the country, but Lagos, in recent times, in fact, within five months, two buildings have collapsed in Lagos. And then before that time, we also have had reports of building collapses in this in Lagos. Lagos. As an engineer, what do you think uh, could be responsible for this? Why Lagos? Has it, has it um, crossed your mind? Yes. Or have you, has it begged for answer you know, in your mind before? Yes. Lagos is a very peculiar place. Why? Why did I say it so? Number one, most of the landed areas in Lagos are reclaimed landed areas. Reclaimed sand field, sand field, uh, some of them are so marshy and with such type of uh, soil or such, such type of land, yes. there are types of foundation that can sustain buildings in those areas. We talk of pile foundation, raft foundation, those are engineering terms. Have you know, have you not crossed your mind how a third million bridge has been sustained over the years? in the same Lagos without a collapse. There hasn't been any major collapse except for a remedial um, work done on it from time to time. Sorry. So for me, there are, Lagos is peculiar. Uh. The, the, the landed area in Lagos is reclaimed and as such require very expert type of foundations for, for buildings to be sustained in Lagos. But how many of our clients, apart from government um, agencies, can, um, can source for funds to be able to put up such structures that will be, that be, that be supported by, because these this foundation types I'm talking about, they are, they are capital intensive. Huh. You, you look at um, um, Todd Mainland Bridge, for example, look at the columns supporting, supporting it. Do you know how many thousands of uh, depths of of meters that that they that, that have been dug and then concreted 
uh, with reinforcement and all of that to be able to support what it what is supporting today. So now, is it is it, would you say it's ignorance or deliberate? Uh, because it's going to be too um, too prompt, too way. Uh, is is it that is it ignorance? Would you call it ignorance on the part of the people or just deliberate stupidity? And then, secondly, is government powerless? So well, then, uh, I want you to look at. Okay, it's becoming three now. Yes. One is it uh, ignorance or deliberate stupidity, or and then is government powerless? Because when this, there should be monitoring agencies. Yes, yes. The truth is, um, government is not powerless. The truth is, when government wants to do their job. Yeah as empowered by the Constitution. They, there's nothing that can stop them from doing what they need to do. Yeah, but why, why do we, okay, for example, now, let's look at the DKOE one now. Yes. The white paper, they've already done whatever they wanted to do. Has, has, it, has anybody been sanctioned? I'm not, I'm not sure anybody has been sanctioned. Has anything been, has any concrete step been taken? So, so that there's no repetition sure. of the, of the oh, same. Oh. It goes back to what I said earlier, that you know how we do things. I'm not a government. I'm not so, how we do it. So, so people who are supposed to get to a site and, and see an, 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 an anomaly and say, oh, you have done this wrong, you have done this wrong, stop work. Yeah. The people on the site will tell their guy, ah, they stop our work. Oh. The yoga will know how to regulate its way such that they will continue work. For them, you know, I, I, it goes back to, you know, like I said earlier, yeah. we are all to blame. Okay. We are all to blame. The client that wants to do the building, it's not like he it doesn't know the right thing. But he will prefer to use an artisan because an engineer and the engineers will, will, will charge him. Mm. So it goes to the charge. Yes, the question they will look at is okay. Your own fees alone can even build the build house. It. Yes, but is it not safer? Is it, is it if, if okay? For example, um, all the, the build, I'm sure that the engineer that the, the engineer for that Ekoi building, yeah. he, I'm sure he is not himself now. Uh, as in, he will be like is, yes, mm -hmm. his uh, license must, must be must be shaking right now. So, uh, if an engineer takes up a job. And then you, he's sure that he's going to be there to say, okay, I'm the one who did this job. Or if anything happens, the engineer will be held Into responsible, responsible now, for. I, I followed some experts, I mean, on this issue, and then they have been able to ra raise um, some some of the causes really of building collapse in the country. Uh, I mean, ranging from faulty design, negligence, incompetence faulty construction, yeah. uh, foundation failures, uh, extraordinary loads, yes. and then corruption. Now, That's you <laughs> are talking about engineers, engineers, engineers. You've said it um, a countless number of times since you started talking. You know, but really, uh, we understand that some engineers can also be corrupt. Of course. We understand that some engineers can also want to cut corners. Course. You understand that some engineers can also want to make more than you know what they are being paid, and so if they want to do that, they may beat down prices, prices or cost of and the use, materials and the rest um, of them. Substandard materials. And, and then and I also understand that. that the real estate sector is unregulated. Yes. How bad really is the situation? Wow. Don't you think engineers too should share huge chunk of the problems that we have? Um, for, engi for engineers, we have a regulatory body, NSC. Okay. Um, and uh, from what I know that is operational in Lagos, you can't even be an engineer on site if you are not, uh, if you don't you have your license. Re yeah, license. Okay. You can't even, it, 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 it can't even happen in Lagos. But are they also not corrupt? That's what we are talking about. Mm. Um, everybody wants to make profit, okay. one way or the other. Everybody wants to make profit. So it all boils down to um, individual integrity. Okay, this thing I'm going to do, is it going to 
Is he not going to soil my name? I mean, uh, how, how, yeah, my reputation, reputation over the years. Is he, this over years. Is he not going to tarnish my image? Uh, the person who did the Kohi will not be okay. I'm, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm telling you from, from, it's just like a doctor, a medical doctor, hmm. who uh, maybe there's they, a mal malpractice under his watch. You understand? His license is, can be revoked. Yeah, so, when, when you say it's not going to be okay, when you say it's not going to be all right, it's not going to be this, why has the NSC, uh, has, have, uh, has there been sanctions? Uh, have, uh, you know, because, you know, this, this, nobody, I'm not too sure, maybe I'm not too much in the know, but I'm not too sure we've had engineers or, you know, um, Anybody within the construction setup, you know, that failed construction setup, anyone that has been brought to book that we can say, oh, okay, this guy was sanctioned. Oh, so license for lawyers, we, we find that they are disrobed. Mm -hmm. For doctors, we hear that they they withdrawn their license. Mm -hmm. But you know, I'm not too sure. Uh, I'm we, not sure we, the NS, we, NSC is um, licensed to or empowered. To, to, do to, to do that, to sanction. Not, not like they cannot sanction. They, they, are, they can sanction their members, of course. Okay. But we, are, we know we, we have a lot of them who are not members. Uh, okay. well, it's, not, it's different from, uh, from the MBN, sorry, the yeah, NMA. Okay. You cannot operate without being yeah, under oh. NMA. And the same, the same thing with the uh, with, uh, NBA. You, you have to pass through them. Okay. Yes. So, but for the, the engineering sector, uh, not all of them. Not all of the people are, are registered and they are, and they are, and they are operational. Oh, and they, they, are, they, they are constitutionally allowed to operate like to that. Op no, they, they is not. Um, they are not constitutionally allowed to operate. But of course, we know we know that um, in every sector, in every profession, we have professionals. And we have quacks. Quacks. Mm. And then there is a freedom of association. Freedom of so association. We have, we have all <laughs> of our quacks. But when we're looking at that, because now uh, we, are, we have talked about safety, yes. we have talked about stability. Yes. Um, what about substandard materials? Hmm. Um, so for, now, for substandard materials, that's why I said um, government, in, in her own magnanimity, have put in place policies and structures. Let me give you an example, sir. In Otade, we have a material testing center. But how many people take their soil to that place for testing? Okay. But that is the ideal thing. How many people are, do that? Okay. So they, they ought to take their materials to, um, to, for testing so that they will, be, they will be able to advise them on what to do. On how to go about it. Okay. All right, uh, we are still watching New Dawn, and um, we're looking at the incessant building collapse and the way forward. Um, we're going to take a break now. When we come back, we're going to continue with the program. We're going to bring in another guest who's going to be part of this discussion. <laughs>
Well, that advert you always said, if it happens, maybe it's going to happen one day when we're going to be building collapse free, at least. <laughs> but it's, it's, it's not really very funny. We're still looking at coming incessant building collapse, the way forward. And just before we went on that break, we were discussing with the civil engineer, uh, Mr. Sam Onebamoin, and um, I'm glad we have another person. Mr. Sam is a civil engineer, yes, and we have a structural engineer now in the house. He's a fellow of the Nigerian Society of Engineers, uh, engineer Dr. Olari Waju Apampa. I'd like to welcome you, sir, to New Dawn. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. We're looking at building collapse. We've tried to do some preliminary assessment. We've tried to look at. From your own standpoint, as somebody who is in the know, somebody who's had a lot of experience in this, um, what exactly is the main cause of building collapse? But, um, thank you very much. I think if I want to take it from the root of the problem, yeah. I would say it's attitudinal. Okay. Um, our society is transiting from a certain background into that is not um, not used to rules of city living, and we suddenly find ourselves the city thrust upon us, or find ourselves thrust into the city. We have not yet internalized the processes and procedures of civilized living. Mm -hmm. Why do I say this? Now, we have, our background has been in uh, things of, you know, maybe more dwellings, uh, yes, dwellings, uh, bungalows and things like that. But when you're in a city, you are concentrating large masses of people in small land areas. And therefore, you want to go vertically, build one story, two story, three stories, four stories, and so on. There are rules of doing this. It's the skills and expertise required are not the same mm -hmm. as we had been used to as a society. Okay. Now, there are also rules about the things you do, the things you don't do, the people you approach, and the permits and uh, licenses and approvals approval. you get. Yes. So if people have built a bungalow and they think that they can now raise it to a uh, one-story building, mm -hmm. there's a process for that. There are professionals to be approached, principally structural engineers. Mm -hmm. Not only that you approach a single structural engineer, you now present whatever it is you want to do to the approving authority. Okay. And they also have professionals there Structural engineers are amongst them, okay. and so on and so forth. To look at these things again with another eye, should we go forward with this? These are things, if you short circuit this process, you're going to have problems. And that's why we're having these problems. You know, the recent case of um, the for example, in those areas, you find that because of um, urban pressure, you know, People are converting their bungalows to single story, four story, five stories, and they are not going through the proper procedures for doing these things. And, you know, procedures, for example, okay, you are building, uh, you, are, you, are, you are modifying a bungalow to a two story building, for example. What is the structural integrity of the bungalow you are building upon? What is the um, bearing capacity of the foundation upon which that bungalow has been sitting for a long time. What is the act did you investigate? What is the outcome of your investigation? Can the foundation take the new building you are putting on? These are all the questions a structural engineer will answer and present his design to an approving authority who will check all the things that he has considered. Okay. And where they think that is okay, they will give the approval. Okay. Where it's not okay, they will ask him to go and step down. And it will not be okay for a number of other reasons. For example, not only social engineer, for example, even our, our professional colleagues in town planning, 
and say, ah, if you do this, if you be a four-story building here, we're going to have too many people here, and That's there is no parking space. Okay. You know, the facilities here cannot support the number of people you propose to bring into this space. Okay. Therefore, still scale it down. So these are the approval processes that we have not yet internalized. And of course, there is the overarching issue of, you know, people cutting corners uh, and <laughs> things like that. So they find their way around these things. So obviously, what I'm saying is not rocket science. Right. We all know these things. <laughs> well, you know, you said we know it, so <laughs> what exactly do we know? I don't know what uh, we know. I don't want to have <laughs> a discussion on uh, Sharo, <laughs> <German day. laughs> So people may know these things, but they want to find a way to get around it. They put pressure on the authorities, they put pressure on, on the professionals, the they put pressure on the contractor. Or rather, put pressure on himself to make over, you know, to make too much, much more profit than he is, is entitled to. But but when you now look at all of this, are we better for it? Because we, we keep having, for example, as we are talking now, sir, uh, you look at even that route, that a route, as out. we are talking now, there are some disasters there waiting to, in happen. Route to happen. So True. are we? Is it that government can't do anything? Is government really power? Is, is government really um, strong enough to handle this thing? Well, uh, you know, when we were, when we were growing up, it is, we, have, we were hearing that um, you are government. <laughs> we didn't understand why no. they say. No, I, I don't know, agree with that. I'll tell you. <laughs> as I've come to the age I've come to now, I've mm -hmm. come to realize why they used to say that we are government. Okay. And it is particularly so in a democracy. You find that those who, um, who rule over us yeah. emerge from amongst us. Okay. And they are prone to the pressures we subject them to. So I don't want to say that somebody didn't do his work or somebody was put under pressure. But the fact is that if government wants to do something and the the very same people approach this, approach that, approach this person, approach that person. Ah, it's not like that. They, they are only telling lies. That, that report is fake. It's wrong. We are going to manage it. Going to... Government sometimes is put under pressure to keep things on hold. The report is there, professionally written, to implement it could be an issue. Sure. Because of politics. We've been, we've been involved in a situation, if you want to mention the specifics of it, okay. we wrote a report as current and advised that um, a particular building be uh, pulled down. And we approached the authorities and the authorities said, well, we agree with you, but uh, let's leave it for the time being. You know, this, is, um, this was some several years back. This is an election year. I can't, you know, not that it was officially said like that. Okay, but well, in discussion, you I can't afford to do this now, you know, so I think there's we know what later we have to get approval for this approval. It's not as easy as we are saying. We must get approval from this, that, and that, and that for it to even go and demolish that place. Uh, in fact, it's even for being to demolish. So, all these sort of political things now come in. It is when things like this happen that government gets emboldened okay. to go again and say, Look, I'm not taking chances anymore. Let's go and implement this report. Yeah. This is this is uh, this is the pressure that comes that we put upon governments. No, now let me uh, take uh, engineer um, on number one. We say we put pressure on government. Is it not? Is government not supposed to uh, be firm? Is government not supposed to, um, you know, be able to put his feet down and say this is the right thing? Are we supposed to put pressure on government? Okay, okay, sir. So, also, so. um, just like uh, he rightly said, all of these things will come under the politics of governance. Oh, okay, you have done, you need to do this, but what is the overall outlook on the government? What is the effect of, the, of taking that particular step on the government? And if we don't do it, if they don't do it, what is also the effect? So those are the things that governments look at, okay. as has rightly said, before taking such um, 
decisions. But if yeah. we're now, if we're, we're faced with that, um, Engineer Papa, it looks like we're going to be having too many collapsed buildings still. Well, the people, we the people ourselves, we are imagine. And like I said, government emerges also from the people. So we are slowly but surely coming to the realization that it is in our overall best interest, interest to do things right and to support government to enforce what is right. So we are coming to that realization. And I think that um, if we have, um, if, 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 if government can apply this um, enforcement, I'm not vigorous okay. in the application of these um, laws. Uh, people would eventually tow uh, yeah, the line. line. But I'm only, I only said about the people to um, let us know that we also, as a people, we have a role to play. It's as simple as, for example, when you have people at um, traffic, uh, traffic at, at the junction with traffic lights, if you choose to disobey the, um, the traffic order, it gets overwhelmed. You know, sometimes in traffic, you see traffic hoarding, battling, struggling to make people, uh, you know, calm them, calm, calm them, let them obey the stop and go lines and things like that. When they all decide to go, sometimes you see the man out of position, he abandons them, okay, we are block it now. <laughs> I'm not saying it's good, good, but if we keep to it, if we keep to the rules as it should be, it makes it easier for uh, laws to be enforced. It means that the people who want to, the people who violate, are a smaller number than those who want to keep to the rules. Mm -hmm. Government can easily enforce. When 90% of the people are violators, where do you start? Now, before even talking about um, taking order from government to demolish or to enforce a particular uh, directive, really, uh, there was an engineer or a structural engineer who allowed or who supervised the supervised. building uh, in the first place, the illegal, the so-called illegal building in the first place. As a member of Koren or NSC, um, what are you really doing to wade into the situation? I also understand that the real estate could actually be so unregulated, you have quacks and the rest of them. What are you really doing to see that um, from your end, you ensure that bad eggs amongst you are fished out and um, the sector is sanitized, sanitized. so that right thinking individuals are the ones of precedent. Okay, thank you. Koren has a regulatory framework in place to keep its members or its registered professionals in check. I can tell you that if any um, Koren engineer is fingered in any collapsed building, he gets a summon to a Koren panel immediately. And he has the risk of having his uh, uh, license withdrawn, withdrawn and further recommended for prosecution by the police. So that's why one of the things that. Have we, have, have we been saying this? Yes. Since we've been oh, yes. 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 <laughs> yes. We have to now bring from the signals we see, we have to bring this to a conclusion. Let's take your last lines now, mm -hmm. uh, Engineer. Uh, Particularly uh, as um, some people have said, this boils down to you know, having value for human life. That is because I don't have value for human life. That is why I want to cut corners, to raise structures that will end up killing people. So, so your last line has value. Uh, uh, yeah. Let's take. Um, okay, so for me, um, so, I will, like it has already been established, I will enjoin government not to relent. Okay. And then as, as we know, we are also an evolving um, people. Um, let's sound the alarm everywhere. Um, your clients, let them engage professionals, not artisans. Let them engage professionals so that uh, they can do proper work. Even though we know they are bad eggs, but at least when they do a proper work, we will have a, um, this incessant uh, building collapse reduced to the best minimum. Uh, Engineer Pampa. Yes, thank you. I will enjoy our people to um, take a, make a resolution to follow proper procedures in their building construction, to do all that is 
necessary to support the regulatory agencies in the administration of building construction in the country. That way, we'll have a better Nigeria and we'll, the, the case of incessant building collapse will be reduced to the barest minimum. If not and minimum. I might just want to ask one last thing. What if you begin to see signs of collapse? What do you advise people to do? There are some who will say it's their enemy, their father's <laughs> enemy. That if is you see signs of collapse, the, ne the immediate thing to do is to evacuate oh, that evacuate. building. Leave that building immediately. Um, mm. Mm. Life has not substitute. All Leave right. the building and keep safe. Thank you very much. We'd like to thank our guests, you know, professionals in their own right, a civil engineer and a structural engineer, Mr. Sam Onebaun, who want to engineer. Sam Onebaun, we want to thank, thank you. you. And um, engineer Apapa, Nariwaja Apapa, we want to thank you very much for helping us. Let's hope that gradually we will learn and um, our own understanding of the implication of what we do to ourselves will come much more to limelight. Thank you so very much. That's the first segment of New Dawn this morning. We'll look at curbing incessant building collapse and the way forward. We'll be right back after this time out to take on another topic. Stay with us.